Let's face it, moving is stressful, especially when you're moving to a city where you've never visited before, where you possibly have no friends or don't know anybody, and on top of that, you need to buy a house. I've heard you, and I wanted to compile a list for you of things that I think will help you make your transition easier as you move into our beautiful city of Las Vegas. First, let's think about what you wanna be close to. That's a very broad statement, but Vegas has so much to offer, and on each side of town, there's something different that you're close to. For example, in Boulder City, we're closer to the Lake Mead Recreational Area. There are things you see out in Boulder City that you don't normally see in Las Vegas. Sometimes you can even run into bighorn sheep along the side of the road, eating grass on your drive to work. And of course you have the beautiful views of Lake Mead from some neighborhoods. Then you have Henderson, which is really close to Boulder City and it's very close to Black Mountain, but doesn't have a whole lot of outdoor activities. And then you have Summerlin, which is right next to Red Rock Canyon. Lots of outdoor activities, lots of shopping, dining, local nightlife. And then you have the north side of town where there's lots of horse property. It's closer to Mount Charleston, which I wouldn't forget about Mount Charleston either because we actually have residents that live up there as well. So how do you see all these places? My suggestion is rent a car, get in it and drive around the city. Do not miss any corner. Check out the dining that's in the area. Check out the parks, the walking trails. Are there outdoor activities? Are there rec centers? And the best way to do that is to just get in your car and really drive around and see which area fits your lifestyle the best. Because ultimately when we buy a home, we want it to supply us the lifestyle that we want to live. My second piece of advice is don't avoid the strip. Because we are the city that never sleeps, there's a growing number of people who want to move here to be in the middle of it all. The middle of the city, the middle of the hustle and bustle. And for those people, they are going to have to settle for high rise living, but it's hardly a settle. There are units with strip views, 360 degree views of the entire city, gorgeous finishes and amazing first class amenities. So if you're one of those people and you're on the fence about moving into high rise living or suburban living in Vegas, I highly recommend you reach out to a real estate agent and take a tour of those high rises because they really are amazing properties. And like I said, they're right in the middle of everything. So lots of excitement, shows, dining, walking to Golden Knights games, Raiders games. So there's a lot of benefits to living on the strip in a high ride. So don't rule that one out. My third piece of advice to you would be to check out all of the great public and charter schools that Vegas has to offer. Not everybody has the ability to pay for private schools. And like I had mentioned in one of my other videos, that if you don't live in Summerlin and you have high school students that you want to be in private schools, sometimes those drives could be 30 to 40 minutes away. So if you don't have the ability to make that drive or move to Summerlin or pay for those private school tuitions, we have a great system of really good five-star public schools and we also have charter schools. So some of you may not be familiar with charter schools. Charter schools are privately run schools that have their curriculum and their operations approved by a governing committee of education in the state of Nevada. These schools are completely free, but they're funded by the state of Nevada. So you get the best of both worlds. They're smaller schools. They're each run by a private educational entity. You're getting a different academic experience than you would if you were at a Clark County School District school. I'm actually from Las Vegas. And we never had charter schools. We didn't have many private schools while I was growing up here. But I have lots of friends whose children have gone to these charter schools and they have amazing academic opportunities. And they're a really good resource for you to check out here. I'd love to hear any of your charter school experiences, good or bad, comment below. I'd love to hear from you guys and just to see what else is going on outside of Nevada with these charter schools.
If you're new to my channel, my name is Lisa Lopez and I'm a real estate consultant in the Las Vegas area. I specialize in luxury real estate and I have a passion for helping busy families like you achieve the American dream of home ownership through my personalized concierge approach to real estate. For more videos about Las Vegas and real estate, subscribe to my channel. My fourth point is we definitely have some of the best dining in a metropolitan area. Vegas is known for some of the best dining experiences on the Strip, but when you live here and you're a local, there are just some nights you don't wanna go to the Strip. Sure, we go visit, we go down there for dinner to celebrate you know, a birthday, an anniversary, or something special, but not always do we wanna go all the way down to the Strip. So knowing what your area has for local nightlife and dining is really important. I have a video in my playlist that covers the pros and cons to living in the most popular sides of town in Vegas, Henderson versus Summerlin, check it out. Some of the sides of town have lots of dining to offer and lots of local nightlife, and other sides of town, not so much to write home about. I highly recommend that while you're here, Go ahead and check out those restaurants, sit down, have lunch, have dinner, spend a little time so that you know which side of town has the restaurants and the nightlife that best suits your lifestyle. My fifth point I'd like to make is it is not hot year round, but we do have over 99 days where our temps reach over 90 degrees and we have over 264 days of glorious sunshine. So it is hot a lot of days. Because of this, most of us here in Vegas have homes with pools or we have some access to a pool. I personally have a pool and even though I don't get in it every day, I do like having the option to be able to get into it when it's a really hot day. I know that a lot of people moving here are like, oh, I don't really wanna deal with a pool. I don't wanna deal with the problems. Don't, doesn't the water evaporate? Trust me, it's really important to have that pool because it gets hot some days. And what better way to enjoy the sun and a barbecue in your backyard and be able to chill in your pool? If you're the type to want a big Olympic size pool in your backyard, you're gonna have to probably start looking at some resale options because with our water restrictions in Vegas, we just passed a law where any new built pool after I believe it's September 1st, it can only be 600 square feet. That kind of eliminates any large pool options unless you wanna go the resale route. My sixth point, which is probably the most important point, stay hydrated. When you're in Vegas, you don't realize how much water you lose through perspiration because we have a dry heat. So you don't realize how much you're actually sweating and a lot of people get overheated and dehydrated and end up in the hospital. So make sure you drink lots of water every day. I try to drink a gallon myself, but make sure you stay hydrated and don't forget to hydrate your skin too. Lots and lots of lotion, lots and lots of aquifer. We do live in the desert. It will help your dry lips, your cuticles, everything dries out. For more videos about Las Vegas and real estate, please be sure to check out my playlist below and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.